Stick around because today we're going to talk about how to vary up the beginnings of your sentences and paragraphs. What's up guys, my name is Brandon McNulty. I'm a writer, I'm the author of Bad Parts, and welcome to my writing channel. Today I wanna to talk about the subject of how to begin your sentences with something other than the same word over and over and over again. And this is something that a lot of writers struggle with. They will write paragraphs where every single sentence begins with the letter I, or the word he, or she, or whoever's the main character's name is. And if you've ever edited your work and you see these kind of paragraphs, you've probably looked at it and got distracted by it, or maybe even got bothered by it, and you just said to yourself, there's got to be a better way to start off these sentences. And today I've got some advice that'll help you with this and I've got plenty of examples that'll make it easy on you. But first I want to say that most of today's advice on starting off your sentences with better variety, this, will, this advice will fall under one of two categories. The first of these two categories involves you swapping out the subject of your sentence and the second of these two categories involves you pushing one of the following to the beginning of your sentence. And it would be one of either adding adjectives, adverbs, participial phrases, prepositional phrases, and clauses. And if you forget what some of these are, don't worry, I'm going to be talking about them in detail later on in the video. But let's start off by talking about how to swap out the subject of your sentence. And just so we're all on the same page, when I'm talking about the subject of a sentence, I'm talking about the noun in the sentence that is performing the action. For instance, if the sentence is Brandon speaks, Brandon would be the subject of the sentence, speaks would be the verb. Subject, verb. Now, when we're swapping out the subject in a sentence, usually the best way to do it is to pick another noun in the sentence and switch around the sentence so that that other noun works as the subject. Let me give you some examples. And with all these examples today, first of all, I'm going to give you an original sentence where it begins with the letter I, and then I'm going to give you a revised sentence that begins with something other than the letter I. So for our original sentence, we'll say, I met Jack at the mall. And this, of course, begins with the subject I, it has the verb met, and then we have the rest of the sentence. Now, if we want to revise that so that it doesn't begin with the letter I, we can say, Jack met me at the mall. Not the most exciting sentence in the world, but it serves the purpose we're trying to do in this video. Now, here's another example. I can't stand winter. Okay, so we have the subject I and then can't stand winter. Let's say we want to make winter the subject of that sentence instead. What we could say is winter irritates me. Now let's take a look at some more examples and in these examples we'll have an action be the subject of the sentence. A lot of you ask me questions from time to time on how to write fight scenes or action scenes. When you are writing these types of scenes, typically they're going to be fast paced and you're going to have a lot of short sentences. So it helps if you don't have I did this, I threw a punch, I kicked, I did this, whatever. So here's, some, here's an example of a sentence where we, we start off with, I did an action, and then we switch it so that the action is the subject of the sentence. So here's the original. I threw a punch at Jack, but missed. Okay, so the punch, let's make that punch the subject of the sentence when we revise it. And we'll say, my punch sailed wide of Jack's face. So in the second sentence, punch is the subject, and the punch sails wide of Jack's face. We get a great visual of this, and we don't have to use the word, the word I at all. This is a much better sentence, and especially if you have a lot of quick actions happening, boom, boom, boom. You don't want to have, I did this, I did this, I did this. That would get very repetitive, and it would just get very old on the reader. Now, for the next set of examples, I want to talk about the five senses, and hopefully you are using a lot of sensory details in your books. You want to use sensory details because they draw your readers into the story. And when you're describing these sensory details, the sights, the sounds, the smells, the tastes, the feels, when you're describing these things, oftentimes you can take these sensory details and make them the subject of your sentence. So let's take a look at some examples. For the first example, we'll work on the sense of sight, and we'll say, I saw a vibrant painting. Okay, so what we can do with this sentence, we can take the thing that is seen, the vibrant painting, and we can make it the subject of the sentence. We could say, a vibrant painting caught my eye. Let's try this again with hearing. I heard the boom of gunshots. Let's see if we can make gunshots at the beginning of the sentence. Gunshots boomed. Effective, works, short and to the point. Now let's try with smell. I smelled cheap perfume. And we could switch this over to cheap perfume pierced my nostrils. Or you could say cheap perfume filled the air, whichever works for you. Now let's try taste. I tasted the mint flavored coffee. Or you could just say the coffee tasted minty. And then finally we'll look at feeling and we'll say I shivered in the cold water and we'll just switch that over to the cold water made me shiver. Okay, so we're done with the first category where we swap out the subject of the sentence. Now let's move on to the second category where we start off our sentence with one of the following, either adjectives, 
adverbs, participial phrases, prepositional phrases, or clauses. We'll start off with adjectives because these are something that everybody understands. Adjectives describe nouns and therefore they can describe the subject of your sentence. So if we have a sentence like, I went to bed hungry, that hungry is describing the I at the beginning of the sentence. Now, if we want to switch that sentence around so that it doesn't begin with the, with the letter I, we can just say, hungry, I went to bed. Now, this isn't going to be the most exciting sentence. It's not going to be the smoothest sentence. But if you are in a pinch, you can just move that adjective to the beginning and you could say, hungry, I went to bed. Now, here's another example. I drove to work half asleep. Same scenario here. You can take half asleep, move it to the beginning of the sentence and say, half asleep, I drove to work. Now, the same idea applies to adverbs, and adverbs, of course, describe verbs. They often describe how or when something is done. Let's take a look at an example that describes how something is done. I hopelessly tried unlocking the safe. And we can switch this over to, hopelessly, I tried unlocking the safe. Another adverb example, one that deals with when something is done, would be, I went to the gym tonight. Tonight is that when. It's an adverb that describes when he goes to the gym. And then if we want to switch that sentence around so that it doesn't begin with the letter I, we can say, tonight I went to the gym. Now let's move on to something a little more challenging, participles and participial phrases. This is something that I, I hope you remember from grammar school. If you don't, let me just refresh you real quick. Participles are ing verbs that serve as adjectives, and this means that they can describe a noun. Here's an example of a sentence where we take a word in the sentence and we make it into a participle. I tried to get the waitress's attention by shouting. Okay, so we can start off that sentence by saying, shouting, I tried to get the waitress's attention. Shouting in this example is the participle. Shouting describes the I. Shouting, I tried to get the waitress's attention. Now you can switch this up. You can use a variety of different ways to open up this sentence. You could say something like, waving my menu, I tried to get the waitress's attention. Or you could say, lifting my empty water glass, I tried to get the waitress's attention. So this is something that not only spices up the beginning of the sentence, but it also adds an effective image that the reader can grab onto. Now let's move on to certain prepositional phrases. And I say certain prepositional phrases because not all of them should be moved around. For instance, it's okay if you're moving around prepositional phrases that are based on time, based on when something happens. In the evening, on his birthday, in the afternoon, things like that, that can work. But other times prepositional phrases should not be moved around. And these examples will show you how it can work and how it can fail. So the first example, I hunt vampires in the evening. If we take that in the evening, that prepositional phrase, we move it to the beginning, we say, in the evening I hunt vampires, that sentence rocks. There's nothing wrong with that sentence. Totally fine. Another one. I interviewed the coach after the game. We can take that after the game and we can put it in front and we can say, after the game, I interviewed the coach. And that sentence, again, totally effective, makes sense, sounds smooth. But pay attention to these next ones because they're not going to sound so smooth. So the first one is, I jumped over the hurdle. Now, if you move the over the hurdle and you push it to the beginning and you say, over the hurdle I jumped, you sound like Yoda. And that's just not how you want to sound in your writing. So keep that in mind when you have a prepositional phrase that deals with location, like I jumped over the hurdle, you don't want to move that over the hurdle because when it says over the hurdle I jumped, it just sounds weird. And then finally, let's talk about clauses. Clauses can be a difficult thing to understand if you need a refresher on them. Basically what they are, they're a group of words that contains a verb. They can stand alone as a sentence or sometimes they need to be connected to another sentence in order to work. In these following examples, they're going to involve clauses that need to be attached to another sentence. So pay attention to these clauses and pay attention to how easy it is to just switch the location of them in a sentence. So the first example, I stopped running when she called out to me. And we can take that when she called out to me, which is the dependent clause in that sentence, and we can move this to the front. We can say, when she called out to me, I stopped running. Both of these sentences are effective and they make sense. Another example, I've been limping ever since that dog bit me. And we can take that ever since that dog bit me, that clause, and we can start it off and say, ever since that dog bit me, I've been limping. Again, both of these types of sentences work. If you want to start it off with that clause, you can. One last thing I want to throw out there is that the advice I gave you today, the examples I gave you, these are not the only ways that you can start off your sentences. There are plenty of other options out there. Next time you are reading a book, next time you're reading a novel, pay attention to how your favorite authors start off their sentences. What kind of words do they use at the beginning? What kind of phrases? Maybe even write these things down, save them for later, try adding them to your own work and tweak them a little bit, see if they can make your sentences more exciting and more effective. Anything you can do to make your sentences better, jump on that. Don't be afraid to try something new. 
So I hope this helps. Question of the day, are you one of those writers who starts off a bunch of their sentences with the same word over and over and over again? It's nothing to be ashamed of. I do it too. It's something you have to clean up during the edits. But if you are one of those, please let us know in the comments section below. Thank you guys for watching. If you want to support the channel, pick up a copy of Bad Parts if you haven't already. Also, be sure to check out my other videos. Hit the like and subscribe buttons for me. Share this video with a friend. And as always, remember to keep on writing.